Okay, traders, what's going on? Jamie Setley here. It is August 20th, 2015. We've got the midweek uh, strategy uh, webinar here and uh, plenty to talk about with respect to the dollar, of course, as it's finally uh, resolving the hellish consolidation, which we know, no, we suspect it was a topping process, but uh, now no was a topping process. Um, as it's broken some important supports. So let's take a look at um, start. I guess we'll start with the euro. I mean, I'm just going to go through some of the the majors and everything, which you know seem to be playing out quite quite well uh, with respect to the levels and slopes and whatnot, uh, especially the stuff that was presented over the weekend. Uh, some, you know, I think the best opportunities at this point probably in Euro, um, in Japanese Yen, uh, which again, you know, dollar Yen breaking out of tight consolidation. So let's just get to the charts here. All right. Um, <clears throat> so as I go through some of the setups, I'll also talk about, uh, or some of the charts, I should say, I'll also talk about, you know, I get questions on Twitter a lot from some of you guys, uh, you know, asking like, you know, what I think here, what I think there. Well, you know, it's been no secret, I don't think, through the stuff that uh, I've been writing that I'm, uh, you know, been dollar bearish for some time. Okay. And, you know, that's quite different. The analysis is quite different than the setup, right? The setup is a specific point at which you're going to buy and sell. So, um, you know, I've been using, these methods that the way that I employ or give out the trade ideas uh, for a long time. And yeah, they'll go through pretty big swings <clears throat> as far as winning and losing streaks are concerned, but um, they do work over periods of time. And, you know, what constitutes a setup? So, you know, if we look at, I think a good example would be to look at the long term page here and what we have with Euro, right? So, Euro going into the week, we were long, actually. We had, um, you know, gotten long at uh, 11.15 towards the end of the week. The setup was a hourly reversal level to buy. Stop was 10.75, right? Uh, Near-term upside favors, as long as 10.79. Failure to maintain this risks a drop in at 109.70, 110.20 before upside resumption. The bottom of the zone, which is where the emphasis was placed, stacked with a lot, you know, lots of areas. So <clears throat> these are objective measures, right? High volume level, right? Um, that's, it is what it is. It's not a fib, right? Where it's like you chose where to draw the lines. It is there because that's just what it is. The month open, it is what it is, right? 109.78. Weekly reversal support, that is what it is, right? There's no subjectivity involved with this whatsoever. That really is where the setups, you know, come from okay so that's cats out of the bag right um now when the setup level lines up with a slope level that's really when you want to put the trade on and in this case you know want it to be long you know as far as euro is concerned so if we go to the euro chart this is like the one we've been following right um <clears throat> short-term chart, um, putting on some moving averages on these intraday charts now because uh, we might be en you know, entering, <clears throat> excuse me, more of a trending period. So it's not a bad idea to look at some of the moving averages. And again, for those that are new or just don't remember or whatever, um, with a moving, with, with the intraday charts and stuff, the moving average that I like to keep on there, um, you know, real simple, 24, it's 24 hour, uh, 120, which is a five day, right? And then 480, which is a 20 day. So I kind of know where that, you know, where everything is. Um, so I'll get rid of it just to clean it up a little bit. But the lines that we were looking at as far as, so this is more the analysis part, right? The drawing of slope lines and whatnot. Um, the former, you know, resistance obviously held pretty much perfectly as support. Um, <clears throat> the risk was that we would, you know, dip into the 109.70s area 
on a final spike as far with the Fed and whatnot got a little thrown off yesterday because the Fed, the minutes were re- were leaked out, right? Um, they, the minutes leaked out early, about almost 30 minutes early. It was like 24 minutes early, I think. And, you know, from that point, the dollar did a quick little dip as I guess the algos saw that there was a rate rise on the table potentially in September. Then the real minutes came out um, after the headline and everything, uh, you know, just went berserk against the dollar because it was actually quite dollars. Anyway, it's the same old story. Initial reaction wrong, whatever. So the initial reaction didn't obviously get to where we were looking for. Um, the 109.78 area, but in any case, you, know, you, you maybe understand a little bit uh, of the difference between how I look at analysis, which is what I view as more subjective, um, and and what I view as um, you know as a trade setup, which is you know objective. So <clears throat> moving forward, what we've got for going into tonight. Or I should say Friday, so tonight and tomorrow um, is with the euro. So here's the daily chart, okay? And this really is, you know, we're still looking higher. Focus is higher towards, again, um, long-term slope stuff. It's much cleaner on the weekly, of course, not as much crap on there. Um, you can see it, you know, really up here, right? This is the big slope line. There's the 200-day average up there. Um, 52-week average also worth paying attention to. That's higher. It's like 116. So in the um, the long-term page over the weekend, talked about the potential for volume uh, to lead price. Um, and this is not like 100% always the case. There's nothing that's 100% always the case, right? But uh, this is certainly um, a strategy or a method, something that's looked at very seriously, uh, by big time players, okay, and it makes sense, okay, given that if there's a lot of volume behind a move, the move's more likely to continue. Now, this doesn't work so well in the stock market for many, many years because the volume situation is all screwed up because there's dark pools and everything else, okay, and the vol- it's not all transparent anymore. Um, so, ironically, in the market that we trade, which is the spot FX market, there is um, which is not, you know, so-called necessarily transparent as far as volume is concerned. We can look at futures volume, and it provides a, a great uh, proxy for what's actually happening in the marketplace. Okay, and uh, what we have here, OBV testing level it was in June. Breakouts in volume sometimes receive breakouts in price. In other words, a breakout in OBV next week. This was written last weekend, so OBV this week would suggest that euro dollar, euro dollar is going to break above the May and June highs. Either way, one fourteen plus or minus. Uh, is huge so around 114 so if we look at the volume uh, picture now this is euro futures okay same chart look what we've got now the week's not over so you know it barring a reversal tomorrow and a close back below where we open this week um we do have a breakout in obv okay so the implication here is that euro dollar will actually break above the highs okay that's what this suggests so how do you take that into account from a trading standpoint? Well, um, I have an idea that I want, you know, a, a place to get long for Friday. It's a one, it's 111.60. I'll get into why that is in just a moment. But you take that into consideration with trading is you say you leave on half, target half the position up here at this longer term resistance, which on spot is like 1380 um, or something like that, and leave half on in case you do get that surge, breakout, whatever, okay? Um, and again, there was an Elliott Wave case for that. It would be if everything from the low here back in, in March is actually a flat, okay? Um, so that is, uh, you know, how to kind of consider the volume considerations as far as, you know, going forward, you know, as soon as really the next day or so. Um, so here we have Euro. Okay, that's weekly chart, daily chart, and 111.60 is the spot that I'd be actually looking to buy now. Uh, stop under today's low, and 
why is this a setup? There's no week open or month open there, right? Well, also an objective level, as we talked about before, um, are your you know daily and weekly reversal supports, resistance, what have you, okay? In this case, 111.60 was the level. That was from 812. That was actually a high volume day. Um, it wasn't as high a volume. Oh, that's not the right chart. Here you go. So it wasn't as high a volume. It's not going to show up as a red level here, but it's it's this chart right here, or sorry, this day right here. Okay, you can see the volume was very high that day, almost as high as it was on July 31st. Now, if we look at the dollar index, we can actually see the 812 was a big high volume day. Okay, so dollar index, uh, and this is the, the ICE dollar index, which is more or less the inverse of the euro because the euro makes up almost six tenths of this. Um, I don't know if the figure is the same, but it used to be 57%. So um, you can look at this for you know divergences and whatnot. We do have a new low in the dollar index here confirming that we had you know the new the new high in the euro. Remember back here NFP day we had the new high in dollar index did not get the new low in the euro that tipped us off that something was up with the euro um, in the dollar. But high volume day so for all intents and purposes 111.60 for us is a high volume piece uh, high volume level in in euro and putting an order there with a stop below today's low is totally fine, um, you know, as far as an objective setup is concerned. Okay, so that's where we're looking for euro. Now, this, you know, the other part of the setup is that it needs to um, coincide, if you will, with slope, right? Well, it does. Um, so the slope levels we have here, okay, we do have this line, which is basically the midline of the slope. Right, so some places, some some charting packages, like if you use TradingView, they might call it the 50 line. Um, you know, if you use it's the 50, basically it's right in the middle between the median line and the lower parallel, with another one in between the uh, upper parallel and the median line. Okay, um, it they might call it 20 on TradeStation, they call it 25 and 75. Okay, so here you can see 25, right? Um, either way, it's just a line between the median line and the lower parallel. Okay, so that line happens to be at 111.60 tomorrow. And if we look at kind of zoom in on a shorter term chart and get a little more uh, even granular on this, you can see that line right here. All right, I'll make it bold so that you can see it better. Okay, so that line right here. Now, this line has been. Uh, you know, it's not just random and that it's in the middle, right? It's been support and resistance uh, going back basically this entire month, okay? So it was resistance here, it was resistance here, it was support here, okay? Even going back to just yesterday, last night in Asia, it was resistance, okay? Had a push through it here uh, in late Asia trading pull back during Europe, okay? So we'd be looking for this to provide support again, and it happens to intersect at 111.60, high volume level, with an even shorter term slope. I put this out on Twitter today um, as far as what I was following. I actually put it out when it was over here. Interestingly enough, this line actually was support on the 10, uh, 10 a.m. New York Times news release. So that's where I'd be looking for support, okay? Um, 111.60. There, there you have it. So 111.60, this actually intersects during European trading, early European hours. So again, if you're up during that time and uh, market trades into 111.60, you might uh, you know, have more confidence on even uh, putting on a bigger size position or something if that suits you. All right. All right. So there's Euro. Um, a lot on Euro, obviously, and as there should be because... Uh, getting into some pretty uh, interesting interesting levels, right? As far as been in a range for a while, uh, long periods of range indicate, uh, you know, potential for a broader move, uh, directional move that is. And as it is right now, 
that broader move could very well be to the upside. Here is some of you may be familiar with my way of looking at uh, contractions, right? Or, you know, coilness, if you will, right? Uh, when a market is tightly wound up, that's when you get the big move, right? And last year, we had uh, this, this histogram is simply counting the number of days that RSI spends between 30 and 70. That's it, okay? And the implication being that the longer the period of days that you know RSI is not overbought or oversold, really you don't have a strong directional move without RSI being below 30 or above 70, right? Strong downtrend below 30, strong uptrend above 70. Okay, so we had gone a period of uh, almost uh, three years, sorry, three years, um, on the weekly chart, three years, but on the daily chart, 146 days, so, you know, seven plus months without registering an overbought or oversold level, that gave way to obviously one of the strongest directional moves that we've seen. The next period when we, you know, kind of went without overbought or oversold uh, was the period in October through December, <clears throat> excuse me, which of course ended up um, giving way to the next leg lower. And now we actually are more coiled than that. OK, so this could be the whole bottoming process, which gives way to, you know, what could end up being a move upwards of, you know, A, B, C, you know, uh, A, B down, B sideways, C up, could be up towards, you know, 118, not out of the question. You can see the 100% uh, extension of the move, two legs from the low, 117.90, uh, all right? So... Just possibilities at this point, but you know, information, uh, useful information, I should say, telling us that the market's extremely coiled uh, for a large move, and that move may very well be to the upside, right? Given the OBV, given everything else, reserve my right to flip on a dime if need be, right? Um, all right, so now we'll move on. Let's see. One moment here. <laughs> What's up, Mark? How you doing, man? Mark asking. He says, uh, "Late. I'm sure you didn't miss me." Never, my friend. Never. Uh, you know, kidding. Always miss you when you're not around. All right. So let's get uh, into let's get into dollar yen next because I do think that along with euro, dollar yen has the best potential for uh, a move, and it's Really, actually, I don't know if the market's gotten dumb or what, but it's like the last two mornings, <clears throat> this morning especially, and even earlier this month with NFPs. Remember this? This has been going on for a while now. Uh, we've come in and we've had, you know, like here's S&Ps right now. S&Ps were down like 18 points this morning at the open, okay? They're down uh, 26 now. I mean, the full-on bear market is coming, okay? It's been – we are unchanged for the year now. The Dow's already in total bearish territory. Here's the Dow. It's below its median line, okay? This is a break. This is serious, all right? You could get a ZRT, zoom and retest on the Dow, get back – if you did, get back up into um, – where's that thing on Friday? Again, this is going to be cash index, so – could happen overnight, but it's like 120 points higher. If that happens, you know, then it's a sell on that median line. But whatever, this thing's already broken head and shoulders pattern. It broke it back here, okay? And now we're headed towards 16,580 more than likely. Um, in any case, the equity markets have, you know, been getting hammered for the last couple of days. The Nikkei. Here's the Nikkei. Nikkei is down almost 400 points today. All right. It's down almost 1,000 points uh, over the last week. All right. Actually come, have just come into support now, interestingly. Okay. So this stuff's getting murdered. Okay. Dollar yen, this morning when I came in, the Nikkei was down 200 or something. The S&P was, was down like 18. Um 
you know, this is like 7 a.m. New York time. Gold's ripping, right? Got the big gold behavior change. Support here a couple days ago, two days ago. And here we are now testing trend line resistance, probably again heading a lot higher. Um, and somehow, for some reason, the, the, the dollar yen, you know, I, I, I'm not just talking about the U.S. stock market. Okay. Some people confuse risk aversion with just the U.S. stock market. That's not the case. Real risk aversion is when you see treasuries bid treasuries. Here's the treasury market. Okay. Yesterday, former resistance was support rips. Okay. Follow through today. All right. Gold also rallying stocks declining, not just in the U.S., but everywhere else, too. All right. But dollar yen has been totally stagnant, hasn't done really uh, much of anything. So that all changed really this morning around like 10 a.m. And finally, dollar yen got the memo again, just like it did with NFPs, just like it did with <clears throat> the last few days, dollar yen finally broke down. Okay, so we had talked about in the swing update last night, we talked about the if, if the larger move is down, right, and this was an important move, um, this was the high volume level here, okay, we had yesterday's move as a, you know, it's really in the grand, it's not that big of a move, but compared to recently, it's a big move, um, and then today, follow through, today's the most important move of all because we broke below the median line here, uh, we also broke below the down sloping median line here, which gives you the opportunity to put an order to sell at basically 123.70, which is the median line, and put a stop above today's high of 124.15. Might want to go a little higher, um, but I'll be putting these orders in after today, so um, you'll see what they are. But uh, it gives you an opportunity to, again, sell dollar yen on a, on a, on a rebound. In target, uh, you know, probably 122.30 or so is the first level, which is um, a confluence on the downside early next week. Okay. Uh, as far as the broader picture, there is still the potential for a move to another high at some point. Again, talked about this uh, some time ago. I think it was the post before NFPs. I talked about the potential for one, two, three. This being a four could be a very drawn out four. Again, much like what we had in 2014. Um, you know, if we start to break this median line, the really long term one, obviously that changes things. But, you know, reserving the right to, uh, you know, turn bullish down here if we need to. OK, but in either case, the next move is lower than looking to sell uh, any strength into, into former support median line, horizontal, what have you, okay? So that's where we're looking with dollar yen. Um, here's the short-term picture for dollar yen. Same chart, just an hourly, okay? So if we want to get real, you know, Bouncing here, would we just trade down to 123.35? Okay, um, we'd be watching for resistance again. This median line, basically right in line with former lows and 123.70. Um, you know, you could widen the resistance uh, out a bit to potentially this median line here too, right? Uh, pull back, retest to this. Um, you know, we have broken this level here, okay? So you'd be expecting uh, resistance lower than the level of the sliding parallel that was resistance last night, which is this one. Okay, so resistance here but this is like a this is more bearish move than something you know than what we've seen since these highs up here so you'd expect uh, resistance to come in prior to not just this downslope but really 124 15 should be safe so <clears throat> you do have the month excuse me the, the month open at 12388 um, 
which could again provide decent uh, decent resistance. Okay, so I give it 123.70 to 123.88, stops 124.20, targeting uh, 120, uh, you know, 122. What did I say? 122.30. Yeah, with dollar yen. They've got some Daniel Wilcox. He's dollar. He he's got a uh, he's got some strong opinions on dollar yen here. Dollar yen doesn't give a, and I won't say that word, but yeah, I hear you. Well, you know what? Dollar yen doesn't give a blank until it does, and then once it does, it really gives a, and then that's when it you know that's when it uh, kind of comes back to reality, if you will. But yeah. Um, yeah, so, okay, cable, let's go out to cable. Yeah, wash out, totally. All right, so let's go to cable. Um, yeah, Angelo asking about CAD, dollar CAD. Yeah, so I'll look at all these, okay? Again, I do think that the best opportunities are going to be euro and dollar yen. Um, look at cable, and here's another setup with cable. Again, uh, same, same deal here, right, as far as cable is concerned. So the longer term slope here um, talked about the tightness, if you will, of um, you know of, of pound dollar and the range that it's in, the 20 day range. Uh, why, don't I, why don't I show you that now? Actually, so we had the 20 day range for pound dollar basically being the tightest. Oh, this is Bollinger bandwidth. I don't want that. Okay, here we go. Uh, so pound dollar. Okay, so pound dollar, the 20 day range recently, 0.84%. All right. That's like means that you know, the highest high and the lowest low over the last 20 to 0.84%. I mean, there's times when we move more than that in an hour. Okay, so <clears throat> there we got that. that the red dot indicates, you know, the tightness of the range. So tight ranges, um, just like long periods of trendless, you know, directionless activity give way to, uh, you know, long trending periods or strong moves. The last time we had a range this tight was back here before the, you know, full on collapse. Okay. Before then it was in March of last year, 2014, got a sharp drop, which would have been a fake out in the first move and then higher. Okay. Before these two instances, you got to go all the way back to like when I only have closing data. Okay. You've got to go all the way back to 1995. And this case, tight range led to a pretty strong move down. In this case, 95, which was actually in August, incidentally, led to a really strong move down. First move was wrong, though. The upside break would have been wrong. Okay. I'm wondering if something happens here similar with pound. Okay. Before that, 1990, before, you know, for a massive move higher. And before that, 1980. Okay. So point being, there's opportunity in pound. I'm of the mind that the at least the next 100 pips is on the upside for cable. Um, one reason why, it's just all upsloping, okay? And for cable, there's a setup here too. And it's to buy, where'd we open the week? 156.50, right? Well, 156.50, 156.50, right? Where we open the week, this is Monday. With today's move, you know, you have an opportunity to buy 56.50 into tomorrow. The stop under 56. It's not a trade I'm going to put in myself because you're still below 
this trend line um, would be targeting the first level would be 157.80. Okay, why two legs up from the low? You've also got up there these highs up here. Okay, this is the short term one that we've been following, the one that you've seen. Okay, so you know, can't you see cable just being real screwy and trying to even maybe come back down to here? If it did that, might be an, a better opportunity to buy with the target up here at 57.80. Um, either way, there's going to be a bullish opportunity in cable. Okay. And here's the short term. Here's the 60 minute chart this morning. Um, tweeted out to watch for support at 56.40. We got that news release at 10. We did trade down to 56.35, got a pop. Again, still not sure. Um, I think Euro is a better shot, and this speaks to the, you know, the, the levels to trade into, right? The, the, not just the slope, but Euro is just moving a lot more freely right now. It's just a better trade. It's a better market. Um, you know, you're, we got the high volume level of trade two in Euro, 1160 and all that. Dollar again, same thing. Very objective on the setup. Uh, cable just seems like it's, it's fighting an uphill battle trading this thing. So, you know, um, want to be long for at least 5780 and maybe something much bigger. But as I mentioned last night, two ways to trade it, right, in the setup. Either watch for lows on, on the lower parallels, okay? Didn't even have this one on there last night. I just had this lower one and this one. Um, so watch for lows on the lower parallel and or, I should say, or a break above the median line and a pullback retest. And again, that would be the zoom and retest trade, okay? So, you know... It's all set up for a bearish dollar move um, still, okay? Um, and, you know, here's, for example, the dollar index, right? This is the ICE dollar index, and it's it's in a very bearish position, okay? It just is. Um, you know, it's found strong resistance. <clears throat> well, I'm just isn't the same one that I had last night, is it? Oh, we're looking at this one. Yeah, because I didn't draw it off the, sp the NFP spike high. That's right. Um, so, yeah. And I think this is probably the right one to look at, right, rather than over here. And, you know, I don't like to draw off the spikes. So uh, especially when it's not confirmed by the euro or anything else. So we were looking at this one. And, yes, the uh, we're in a, bear, a very bearish position as far as the ICE dollar index is concerned, as well as the Dow Jones FXCM dollar index, too. In fact, this one broke resistance today. Or sorry, broke support today. The support line sitting at the median line here. So you know, weakness. You know, if you we could bounce a little bit here, if we do, we'll be watching for resistance from the support line that was just broken, uh, and then for continuation into the next support line, which is the trend line, which you know goes off the the May and and June lows. And if that thing breaks, I don't expect that to break that easily. But if that thing breaks, then um, starts to get really nasty so you know at least for a broader quick decline uh, everyone realizes the Fed's not raising rates so that's where we are with uh, with pound US dollar euro again um, when we look at Aussie and then you know look at uh, Kiwi and also look at um, the CAD okay Aussie dollar, so it got its support last night right at 70, well, 72.84 is the low. We were, 72.89 was the 61.8. Um, it also, and this is why you keep your old lines on the chart, right? 
it also ended up being the top side of the old resistance structure, the old upper parallel. Okay, so this is a great level. This is a level to trade against, in my opinion. So I'd be willing to put an order to buy Aussie tonight. Um, <clears throat> probably a half a position because you're still below. You're still within. You know, you're still below um, the volume level, which is 73.78. You're still below the week open. Uh, which is uh, 73, oh, same level, 73.77, okay, and you've got the slope resistance here. So there's still a lot of resistance up here, um, but, you know, if given the U.S. dollar index and everything else, uh, potential for upside resolution and the fact that gold has been going nuts, and usually over time, gold and Aussie will catch up with each other. OK, they will trade together more or less over time. So, for example, let's, I'll show you that right now. Um, <clears throat> OK, so let's put up gold futures and just go weekly chart. Gold's up 25 bucks, 2 percent today. And Australian dollar futures, OK. So more, they more or less will trade together, okay? Um, is it always perfect? No, but that's when you get the opportunities, right? When one's not confirming the other. Um, gold's in black, by the way. So in this case, they've actually more or less bottomed together. They made their closing weekly lows on the same week. That was the week of July 24th. Since then, Aussie's gone sideways, gold's gone sideways until the last couple days, and then, you know, absolutely ripped. So is Aussie going to play catch up, or is the gold move fake? Well, as far as I'm concerned, with the sentiment we had on gold and everything else, um, and with them, you know, what I'm seeing in the dollar across the board, I would venture to say that gold's going to play catch, or sorry, that Aussie's going to play catch up with gold, Okay. Uh, I mean, you kind of have to make a decision at that point and say it's going to be one or the other. And this is the one I'm going to go with, so based on the evidence. So with that said, moving into tonight or looking at levels tonight, you can see you've got – this is how coiled Aussie is. You've got 25 – all these moving averages are right here together. Um, be looking for support. Probably around 7320. Okay, 7307 still a possibility. It would be an awfully deep retracement, but hey, possibility. Um, 7320 just being, you know, former lows and whatnot. So this is, you know, not nearly as objective. Uh, 7307 would be a level uh, to trade into. The stop under here got that huge confluence of levels that was shown last night it was perfect support here um, in European trading. I thought it'd come in a little earlier during Asian session, but it did not. So we do have that. Uh, looking at the volume, let's see what we got on the volume side. Again, we've got the big level up here. We've traded into as far as on spot 73.78 wasn't reached today, and it's also on the hourly chart. So you know this is important break above there would be a big deal, okay, um, be an important move. Okay, so let's look at Kiwi and CAD now. Kiwi dollar acting much better than, um, than Aussie at the moment, right? Riding, riding this slope here, um, this is a setup for tonight. Would be looking to buy 66.02 or 66.0, probably put it 66.05, okay, um, with a stop under 60, with a 65.75 stop, because you do have the slope to trade against, okay. Uh, you'd be looking for a first target up here of say 67. I think that's something like two legs off the low, maybe 66.95. Yeah, 66.95 is actually the exact level. 66.95 um, would be the first level to watch. Again, with 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 Kiwi, 
the first real resistance, if this ends up playing out, is probably going to be one of these parallels, or sorry, one of these median lines. I'd put more stock into this one, the real long-term one up here, okay? Just because it was such precise um, support back earlier this year in February and in March, it literally was like support to the tick. Okay. And you know, that's when we had the big breakdown, right? So it was once we got below that level. So I'd be looking for resistance up there, um, which over the next few weeks, you know, it's, it's well, the next few months. I mean, it's close to not far from 70 now, but um, over the next couple of weeks, it kind of decreased a little bit each each week. But 69, 70 or so next week, 69, 60s, you know, it decreases like six or seven pips a week. So 65, first resistance, the next one's going to be up there. And that would be a place where you'd actually think about turning bearish again, potentially, for Kiwi. Okay. Because that's the really long-term structure. And if it gets back above there, um, it really changes things. Here's You can look at this on the monthly chart too. Same thing on the monthly chart. So, you know, if we rip above here, that puts us really back in a fairly bullish position for our Kiwi. Okay, we stay below there. It puts us on track for larger declines towards 60. But this is really long-term. I'm probably getting ahead of myself talking about this stuff right now. Um, dollar CAD. So here's a good example of yesterday um, of a setup that just, you know, it just kind of sucked. It went, I mean, it, it set up the setup, right? So, but it went wrong. Um, so we had failures on the first two days of the week um, at the upper parallel, right? After touching the median line. So we were looking for resumption within the structure and eventually, you know, potentially to this lower parallel, the longer term structure, which provides support for a fourth weight, one, two, three, four, five. Um, you know, thinking that we could get two equal legs uh, and maybe even 128 at some point, which would be the 38.2 of the rally from the June low. Okay. Uh, so the setup was basically to sell the upper parallel, which was right at the monthly open price. Okay. Which was 130.85 and, and the weekly open price was 130.90. So it's like, okay, we've got this. We've, you know, made an early month high. We've made um, an early week high. So we've got a level of trade against 31.50. Well, we all know what happened. Crude oil inventories came out, sent dollar CAD skyrocketing uh, for a few hours before it turned around and collapsed, uh, retraced the whole move. Overnight went higher again. Crude oil went lower. Now dollar CAD's coming back, uh, basically unchanged for the month and the week at this point, 30.85. So. You know, for me, um, I think the, the setups out there are better. I talked about, I still think, my analysis tells me that, I, you know, that they crew, that, that dollar cat's headed lower, okay, probably towards 28 or something over the next, you know, number of weeks. Um, but again, what's the setup? Well, at this point, I don't really have one because there's no downslope trade on. That can obviously change. Here's one example of how that could change. You could trade down here. We could break this median line, and then we could inch up higher and trade up into, say, 130.90 again. Same level, okay, if this were to happen. This isn't a verified slope because we don't know if this is actually real or not, right? We have no idea. Um, you know, it'd be if so we want to touch the median line first after you draw it, okay? And if we were to do that and then trade up into here, then you'd have a setup to sell, and that would be much later in the month. Uh, in fact, it would probably be, what's well, this, next Wednesday, 26. So something like that, something to watch out for. Okay, so that would be a setup. Um, don't have it now, okay? But it's something that could happen. That's the way it could set up. Okay, so that's, you know, no need to force it at this point, but I'll tell you what I think, you know, you know what I think as far as the dollar is concerned. Um, you know, the dollar is breaking some supports and, you know, might get a little bit of shuffle over the next day or so as we've had quite a run. I'm sure that more people are turning bearish on the dollar here, but we'll be looking for, uh, 
you know any any rebound in the buck in order to uh, in order to sell it. Um, but that's what a dollar cad setup would look like. Okay. All right. There are two crosses that I'm interested in potentially. Oops. Okay. Sorry, guys. I haven't been looking at the. Um, I've been looking at the questions because I'm working on one screen. Let's see here real quick. Okay. Mark Cable screwed me so many times staying away. Yeah, I mean, you know, that it's it's been a disaster, that's for sure. For me, Cable, uh, you know, as mentioned, we'll watch for – and Raj also asking about Cable. Christian, Kat Yen, you're again for Kelly. Um, Cat Oil, yeah. Yeah, so – hold on. Let me write this stuff down. Cat Yen, Euro Yen. Cad and oil, and uh, let's see. Okay, all right. So, as far as cable mark, um, yeah, it's it's a bitch, right? And you know, best spot again, I think, is probably going to be if you get fifty-five fifty. Uh, to buy, okay, um, because it seems like cable likes to kind of do what seems impossible. So if it breaks the lows down here, I'd actually be looking to buy it on this lower parallel. Um, and then 57.80, just because again, that's two equals left, two equal legs up. If we in this Raj, this goes to you too, man. You're talking about cable pound dollar. If we break 157.80 with authority, then yeah, okay, then look higher towards 58.78. Okay, um, that's the daily reversal level on the British pound. Um, but if we fail up near 57.80, the breakout, so-called, might actually be totally fake, false, whatever. Okay, and one reason for that, <clears throat> you could envision this being a 1, 2, or an A, B, whatever. Okay, and we've seen cable do this before with this tight range where it breaks out, but the first move is the wrong one. In this case, I'm not sure, you know, if the first – it's tough to say what is the first move, right? So, like, here's – okay, pound dollar. So here's the 20-day range, okay? Was the first move – this was NFPs. Was that the first move? Because that was a new 20-day low, or is this the first move, right? And is this the real move, or we have two false first moves? You see what I'm saying? Um, you know, the 240 RSI is is bullish. Okay, we had an overbought here. Since then, we've held uh, 40 level on lows, but we also haven't gone above 70. So you can't really say that it's overly bullish. It's more like sideways at this point. Daily, similar story. We were overbought up here. Since then, RSI has treaded basically between 40 and 60. In fact, we're up near 60 now. So, you know, it's very much just a sideways market. We're going to get a big move and a breakout here at some point. I wish I knew what direction it was. Again, I think it's up given dollar direction and everything else, but I really don't know. Or this could go on for longer and we could just go sideways. Um, let me get to the other questions, though. So Daniel's asking about CAD and, CAD and oil. Do I pay attention to it? Yes, but not in the way that you probably think. So if we've got here, and I'd mentioned this on Twitter the other day. Um, I think it was last week, actually. Talked about, <clears throat> well, crude oil sinking, right? But today it's reversing, okay? Um, if we get some sort of a low in crude oil, you, one, you have a new low in crude, but we did not have a new low in Canadian dollars or a new high in dollar cat. Okay. Uh, we also did not have a new high in dollar knock, which is the other petrocurrency to follow. There's several, but that's one of the big ones. So 
in that sense, I look at it as a divergence trade, right? So that you've had, you know, a trend towards weakening oil, obviously, trend towards weakening CAD and weakening NOC, but not getting new highs in those respective currency rates while you did get a new low in crude oil tells me that the trend is at serious risk of reversing potentially very sharply. Okay. And that goes to anything that's in a relationship. Um, earlier this year, for example, we had, you know, the dollar index, well, we could just call it, we could call it Euro. Okay. Euro and crude oil. Um, let's see, there's crude. Okay. So in March of this year, we had this happening where we had this new low in crude. You can see it. Remember, we had the new low in crude. Okay. And crude started going higher. And at the same time, we had this new dip in euro, but we didn't get any sort of dip in in crude. So it was like, you know, it's, it's a false move. Well, at this point, we're seeing something similar. Euro's holding up well. Crude's at new lows. If crude reverses higher, you can bet that euro's going to go screaming higher too. Okay, just because this relationship, crude's really been the anti-dollar move, right? So it's kind of breaking up at this point. Um so that's with cat and oil. I look at it from much more of a divergence trade. Like there's times when you look at it and now is one of those times because they have been moving together. Um, and there's times when you dismiss it, like when prior years when there was not a whole lot going on, um, you know, it really wasn't all that useful. OK, but right now, yeah, it is useful. So specific times, very useful right now is one of them uh, as far as, you know, confirming highs and lows against each other. Let's look at CAD yen. There was a question on CAD yen. And again, that's going to be a good one to look at given what's up with oil. So, so weekly chart. I can't say I've looked at this in quite a while, but I have so many always looking at different charts that it is uh, well this could be an interesting dividing line per so looking at that okay so that's an interesting dividing line right there and again this is you know in this environment right now um, with everything going on with the dollar and I think that there's risk of just a, a broader dollar decline once that's out of the way then it might be time to look at yen crosses again, as far as playing those more, um, you know, taking a broader view on yen crosses. But, you know, as far as, as looking at this right now, I mean, dollar, or sorry, CAD yen, you know, and it's, I mean, it, we're, we're, we're in a downtrend, okay? But as far as where do you want to sell it, you could be looking at this slope here. And these are, these are the same exact levels that I had on the um, on the weekly chart I just showed you. I mean, I can tell you right here that CAD yen's in a very bearish position as long as it's below today's high. Literally, you can draw a line over today's high. Okay, uh, more, maybe give it a little more room than that. Might want to give it yesterday's high, but I wouldn't do that because if the market were to trade up there, I'd be actually looking to sell on this upper parallel anyway. Um, you know, this intense selling pressure is not there today. So, you know, I think that there's better things to look at out there, uh, you know, as far as, you know, a trade is concerned and, you know, dollar yen's one I would look at uh, or that we are looking at, but um, upper parallels resistance. Okay. So wherever that may happen, I don't know if it happens over the next couple of days or not. Um, you know, this median line is resistance. 
I wouldn't look at that. It's a more interesting picture on the longer term time frame. Um, to be sure. So I would focus there. So if we look at the longer term time frame, basically, you know, last week selling into this is resistance. As long as it's bouncing up into there, it's resistance. So, you know, call it 9575, you know, up towards 9630. Again, no idea if it gets there. It might not. Okay. It might come off fairly hard. Okay. But like, I think the better trade at this point is probably going to be dollar yen. Okay. You know, I don't want to get too too fancy with the trading, the crosses, and all that stuff. We, you know, been right as far as the analysis is concerned on the dollar setups haven't worked, uh, which means they'll probably start working now. Um, and you know, you don't want to miss that, uh, you know, because you're concentrating on playing like CAD yen or whatever it may be. Whereas you know, oil finally r rallies. 10% or 15% or whatever dollar cat falls and you're a short cat yen, but you're not getting all the juice you need out of it or that you should because you're focusing on cat yen instead of, you know, uh, dollar yen or whatever. Now one cross that does look really interesting um, <clears throat> to me, there's several cat crosses actually that look really interesting. Uh, and then I'll get to Euro yen because there was a question on that, but it was, where were we here? Um, oh, pound yen and pound kiwi. Some of the pound crosses. So, like I said before, I don't know what's going on with the with uh, pound uh, dollar, right? I think it's going higher eventually, but you know, it's kind of a uh, weird that it hasn't broken to the upside after. You know, the dollar's gotten smoked the last couple days and pound dollars just done nothing. So, uh, and, you know, that gives me pause, I guess, on trading pound dollar itself. Um, but how many times has pound yen failed up here, right? Remember the gap, 94.99? Okay, we failed at that gap like five or six days this month, okay? Um, so, again, I don't you know, know if this is a really sick and twisted uh, trick that, you know, dollar or the pound yen's going to eventually rip right through it. But whatever the reason, there's a lot of selling up here. And we do have a bearish structure to work with now in the really short term. You can see the really solid touches on the median line, um, some touches on the upper parallel. I would be following this closely. Okay. We're at the month open right now as well in pound yen. So if this thing starts to break down here, then your sell becomes the confluence of this trend line and this median line, which would be about 193, and that would actually be tomorrow. Okay, so if that happens overnight, rebound and sell it. If you drift sideways to higher or whatever from here, then maybe you get to sell this upper parallel. All I'm saying is focus or don't forget about pound yen here. It's been quiet for some time. That's, you know, makes everyone forget about it, but... We're going to get a big move out of this at some point uh, in the near future, and it might be setting up right now for the sell. Okay, I'm just saying, um, you know, don't forget about it. It very, very well may be in a broader range from the highs back here in June, right? And if we are, right, and here, look, here's the. Here's the here's the slopes we're looking at on the um, got two slopes we're following on the daily. So if we do break down here, that's a pretty big, you know, it's a pretty big break. And say even if this is not the beginning of something major in a, in, a, in a change, you know, even if this is like a triangle or a flat, potentially, you've got. What downside for probably at least four or five hundred pips. OK, within this range and that's being conservative. So, um, yeah, I would not dismiss potential for pound yen. And the next one that, you know, interesting, and of course, 
we've been looking at this for a while, but it's getting down again into the bottom of its range here um, over the last number of days is, is pound Kiwi, right? And how many times have we tried to take out 240, 240, 240, okay, 240, 20, 240, 27, 240, 25. I mean, for whatever reason, 240 is not getting taken out. All right, so if there's some sort of a barrier at 240, and this is, you know, somewhat of a topping pattern, already broke this slope and this trend line on pound Kiwi. And again, um, you know, even a correction, if you will, within this major up move, you know, could be on the order of, well, just measure it, okay? You'd be looking at a measured move on a break below 231.50 of 222.80, okay? So there's pound Kiwi, okay? And as you can see, 60 minutes with, you know, showing potentially some trend action uh, beginning as we were trying to crack below this 20-day average. Um, I haven't identified any real solid, you know, bearish slope or anything to work with on the short term at this point. Yeah, I mean, you can't even say that's possible, you know, that's possible at this point because there's just absolutely nothing um, touching a median line. You know, so we don't really have anything to work with here just yet, but again, it's, it's on the radar. Um, you know, and this could look, it could be consolidation before it goes higher, okay? I'm just saying, we've had such a run and all these failures at 240, near 240, uh, and then the Titan coil, okay? Uh, to me, you know, kind of warns of a trap. Many people expecting this thing to burst higher after all this consolidation would be wary of it actually going the other way. So that's what I'm looking at as far as pound Kiwi. Okay, so let's look at Euro Yen because there was a question on Euro Yen as well. So Euro Yen, I still like the idea. We didn't get it last week. We were waiting for a final pop in Euro Yen to get short. Um, I would still respect potential for resistance. Up here, you know, 3940, 3960. Um, support is right here. With respect support at 3690. Here's a, this is a four hour chart. You might want to follow this. This is just uh, the slope is the trend line from the low back here. Okay, um, July low into the August low. And then those are all parallels extended off of it with this being the midpoint, the dark one. So you know, you've got strong, potentially much stronger resistance up at um, up at that long-term parallel, okay, that extends off the gap back then. And if you forget what that, remember what that is, but drawn it a bunch, it's just this. So it's the same thing that was extended here and then here, okay. A little lower right so it's more or less right above uh, where we are here so you know if you could get a new high in euro uh, yen and maybe that coincides with dollar yen declining euro dollar rallying but euro eventually euro dollar trading up into the top of its range and failing a little bit and then getting real risk aversion potentially we get a euro yen top up here um, near 139-ish or something, okay? Uh, you know, I wouldn't just sell into that level at this point. I'd be because what happens is we were willing to do that over here because we were looking for exhaustion. But after you have a pullback and the potential for a new, you know, high, it kind of provides a little more juice for the move, okay, um, to potentially extend higher. 
So I would wait until you get some sort of reversal day or you're showing, you know, maybe four hour candles, uh, you know, showing reversing. But really pay attention as the market approaches these highs up here. If it gets up to again. My mouse is all right. It gets up to again, 139 to 139.59 uh, or so. Let's see, what, let's see if there's a fib up here. Fibs at 39.40, so, you know, but that's the big level I would be watching for Euro again. Um... So Raj asked if I'm short dollar yen. Yeah, so that's the thing. You know, I was talking earlier with someone, but, you know, it. this morning when I was saying that the um, dollar yen's on the brink, I tweeted that out, right? So a lot of times when I'm tweeting something like that, I'll go into the trade, right? So it's really hard for me to, like, give you that trade because it's not really it's not really planned it's just kind of like feel at the time and I do a lot of trades like that so you know I'll go in and I see where we are and like S&P's doing this gold's doing that the Nikkei's doing this dollar yen sitting here this morning right here right so once US equities open I just start selling dollar yen and um, sure enough it broke and then I just take some off right and keep on like a quarter of it but like if it would if it were to rebound back up into resistance tonight, I'd be selling more, and that would be the swing trade that I put on the orders or whatever. But um, you know, giving the defined setups, you know, where, with the exact order placement and all that stuff, it's a very different ball game than you know trading day in and day out, and sometimes leaving a position on, and sometimes you catch one, right? So um, yeah. You know, Raj, I am short dollar yen right now, but, you know, it's from up here and, you know, I'm not going against, you know, anything that I'm telling you guys. I'm doing what, you know, same thing, but it just might be in a slightly different manner because let's say this morning I start shorting dollar yen. I say I tweet out short dollar yen order here, but then it starts going up and it's like higher by 10 or 15 pips. I might start covering it at that point. Because I'm like, well, it should have broken down by now. But if I start tweeting that out, you guys will think I'm nuts. Because I'm like, you know, going back and forth and like, you know, it just can't, it just can't be done, right? So as far as the plan trades for this, that are meant for the swing trades are concerned, that's a totally different story, right? So uh, those have to be defined and very objective and blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's, you know. That's what I'm looking at. But, you know, through the writings and everything, like writing last night, you get a sense. You should get a sense for what I'm thinking, right? And I want to sell it here and there and blah, 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 and I'm bearish or not bearish or, you know, whatever. Um, <clears throat> that's what's up with dollar yen. Mark asking about crude. Yes, I mean, look, I don't, you know, I don't know how, how big the crude move on the downside or, sorry, on the upside could be. Um Look at some charts here, though. So, okay, so here's a Four hour chart. So, first of all, you're not going to have any <clears throat> anything bullish to work with until you trade up through here 
you have to trade up to 4270, 4370 or something like that, 4340. Um, and yeah, so I, mean, I just can't answer that question right now as far as, you know, I can't say if crude's bottoming here or not. I have no idea. I'm saying that dollar CAD's not at a new high, and the euro's not at a new low, and dollar NOC's not at a new high, but dollar, but crude oil is at a new low. I mean, it's down nine straight weeks. This will be 10 straight weeks if that happens, if we don't go nuts tomorrow on the upside. So, you know, if we go down 10 straight weeks, it'll be the first time since 1991. All right. Um, we were down nine straight weeks. The last time nine straight weeks was 1991. Okay, and back then what happened was you had a 15% range that took hold for three months, and it was very volatile. And then the market rallied another 15% on the breakout. So it took six months, market to go 30%. Okay, um, and it took three months for you to sit out the consolidation unless you were trying to trade it. So, you know, gut tells me that there's a big rally and crude around the corner, but does it go to another low or not? I have no idea. Okay. Again, for me, there's not a setup here. Um, setup is start to make a pattern of some sort, like rally and dip and what have you. Here's gold. Gold could pull back here a little bit. Got the trend line right here. Again, could be watching for uh, support tomorrow on this line, five bucks lower, 11.47 potentially, or it could get a deeper pullback, but uh, that's where I would start looking for support, I would say, would be Aussie CAD, yeah. So Aussie CAD's actually got a really nice looking slope on the short term. And you can see it right here. So this is a 60 minute chart, Aussie CAD. Okay. That's another reason why not to screw with CAD too much at this point. Like if you look at Aussie CAD, it's got this bullish slope. You know, that could end up really propelling this thing a lot higher in the coming days, weeks, or more. Even KiwiCAD has one. It's not nearly as pretty, but it's still there, right? So KiwiCAD right here too. Got the median line. And so it failed, pull back push back above it, back above the month open, we could be try could potentially be trying to break out to the upside on KiwiCAD. Again, I'm going to stick with dollar crosses and trading. When I trade well, that's what I'm trading. But I'm messing with all this other crap, not trading well. But um, looking at these as indicators, if you will, of, you know, weak for strong or whatever, you know, Kiwi CAD here, yeah, this is resistance right now, all right, but we've got the short term bullish slope and we're pushing above the median line. So, um, you know, coming off of obviously very, very, very deeply, you know, oversold, if you will, longer term uh, levels. So, there was a question on Pound Aussie. Um, don't, you know, have much here. It's, you know, pound kiwi is better, in my opinion. It's with all those failures at the top and pulling back. Pound Aussie is a total disaster mess right now. Um, kind of, and, you know, a lot of the crosses are like that because it's a dollar market right now, right? The dollar is, uh, you know, 
it's everyone's focused on the Fed. Everyone's focused on, you know, the, the, the moves are in the dollar pairs right now. So, you know, I'm not necessarily trying to look at, you know, when I did, when I, when things were real choppy, that's when I was looking at the crosses, but now that the dollar's cleared up, now look at the dollar pairs, right? You're going to miss out on all this stuff that we've been waiting for. We don't want to do that. Okay. So, you know, with pound Aussie, I have no idea. Um, you know, I've been thinking that Europe against commodity crosses have been topping for like three months. <laughs> so, you know, and maybe they have, I mean, you know, back here since mid July, I haven't really gone anywhere. We've kind of been in this holding pattern, but at this point, um, you know, still have more or less, uh, just a sideways move after an up move. Uh, same as pound kiwi, but if you're going to trade pound against something, pound kiwi looks like it's got a little more promise at this point, a little ahead of pound Aussie, right? Failures at the top, starting to break some support. Already broke this one, which was clean resistance at the top. So, um, you know, that's right focus at, at this moment. Okay. Daniel asking about the dollar news. How's the dollar news? Um, well, I mean, we had the Fed yesterday, I guess, but you know me, I don't really, I'm not like a news junkie guy. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I think that you get a lot more out of this, like this chart of dollar Swiss yesterday, me saying that this is a big move and the dollar Swiss breaking down. Um, you know, that's a big move, right? So, you know, I'm not sure the dollar, if we look at, if it's like, I think what you're asking is there, are we getting like extreme type of stuff or it like, you know, let's see, let's look it up. Okay. So news, US dollar. US dollar slumps on a hint of the latest September interest rate. US dollar may rise. What the hell's that? Um, that's from yesterday. Okay. That's not right. Um, so that'd be bearish. Um, <clears throat> bearish Federal Reserve and it's in U.S. dollar tumbling. Um, Daniel goes, that's your shit, man. Hey, I didn't write that, okay? That's not – don't say that's my – that's not my shit. I did not write that. Um, yeah, I mean, look, you could – we could start getting some – you know, like we said here before too. We've got – we go to the dollar – Here's the ice dollar, right? This is the one I think that's right to look at. Um, we've also got this. Look, I'd not be surprised to see the dollar start to stage somewhat of a, you know, maybe a comeback um, from this if we get down into this region, right? So a little lower. You know, everything right now, though, is pointing to the downside as far as I'm concerned. Okay. So, <clears throat> so what was this here? Well, you've got uh, downtrend supports. And that's obviously been broken. This has been broken. You know, so for me, I don't want to get too cute here as far as, uh, you know, expecting the dollar to rip off of here. I, you know, I would not be surprised to see a little bit of a bounce in the dollar here. Again, looking to sit. To, to buy euro at 1160, that would, you know, that's a little bit of a dip from here, right? We're 1195. The high up here is 1220. So that'd be a, you know, that's a 60 pip drop um, in the euro. So yeah, you could get a pullback, maybe, to sh maybe a little shakeout right now, but I don't see anything, you know, on the sentiment headlines, if you will, um, that you know suggests that the dollars 
except for this one, I guess, send US dollar tumbling 17 hours ago. Um, and US dollar rises against Canadian dollar before Fed minutes. And they rise. Is it time to short the dollar? Eh, that's not a good one. Yeah, I mean, there's a mix. US dollar slumps. You know, put it this way again, we've, we've had, you know, we've been waiting for this resolution to this range. It's been going on for over a month now. And uh, we're starting to break supports in not just the dollar index, but, you know, euro dollar resistance um, giving way here. Uh, we're giving way in dollar Swiss support, as we noted that yesterday. We're seeing some insane action in far. Look at this. This is the dollar Turkish lira. Holy moly, look at that. We have like a three something percent day today. That's crazy. Um, so that might be a blow off top. Um, let's see. We'll see. Yeah. So, Daniel, to answer your question, would not be surprised to see a pullback in the dollar right here. Right. Uh, but again, wouldn't be looking for a full on right onslaught of dollar strength again from here. All right. So, all right. So that's, um, I got to wrap it up guys. We went a little overboard, but awesome. Thank you so much for, um, attending today. Um, and, uh, you know, let's, uh, get back on track with these dollar pairs. All right. All right. So take care. I will talk to you guys later on. All right. Bye.